Hey there, thanks for watching. Christiana on the Well Behaved Wallet, and I am here to do a life update, kind of circumstance update, what's going on in these uncertain times, um, and what kind of what I've noticed, what's happening, what I've noticed, um, what I've realized, and how that's changed my outlook and my approach. So I'm going to try to be really structured um, in this update. Um, I have five areas that I want to deal with, and I'm going to tell you what they are. So I'm going to kind of go over my situation, what's going on, just the facts, um, realizations, what I realized, um, my goals, how my goals have changed, uh, my strategy, what this updated strategy is going to look like, or kind of renewed strategy, because it's all things that I've mentioned before that I am doing, that I'm actively doing. I'm just changing how I'm allocating my energy. And number five, my story, what I'm choosing to believe and how I am choosing to direct my thoughts. And I say that very intentionally because I believe in this sort of changing climate of the world that we live in right now. The greatest weapon and asset that we have is within us. And it's it's our power to affect our emotions and what we choose to focus on. So that is what I'm going to be going over in this video. So starting at the top, uh, my current situation. So like many companies and um, offices around the nation, um, around the world, um, our office has transitioned to, uh, our company has transitioned three offices to work from home, um, three out of our 11 offices. And they're in the highest, um, in the areas that are the most affected by um recent developments. Um, nobody from our office, from any of the three offices, have shown any symptoms, but they're just out of abundance of caution deciding to transition employees to work from home. So this was announced on Wednesday, that on Thursday, uh, that it would take effect on Monday, and then it would be in effect for two weeks. We would, we are planning to go back to work on Monday, March 30th, um, but we will continue, the company will continue to monitor the situation and update as necessary. So this was announced on Wednesday that it would begin next month. Monday, so Monday the 16th of March and on Thursday we came in and the company announced you know what why are we waiting let's just let's go you may work from home from Friday on Friday so we kind of had plans in place but then it became more immediate um, and really all that meant for me because I've worked from home before we have the privilege of being able to work from home so I kind of knew that I was set up and knew that I had access to our our shared drives um, and all proprietary software um, there, there were no there were no firewalls that I had to overcome. So all it is is basically a stable um, internet connection with enough bandwidth to power the speed that I need. So I knew that I was set up to do that. All I did was I took home an additional monitor from my workspace. It's kind of actually set up here. Um, and I'm all kind of, um, and that was really all I did. And I took home an, an adapter so I could plug my laptop into the monitor so I have two screens to work from. Um, and that was my setup. I I am trans. I have like my my little office kind of setup with a door that I can close and just be like, this is my my work time. Um, and that was that was sort of that was what I um, did to set up for this work from home um, direction. So those are the facts. That's, that's what I've done to set up. Um, so two weeks working from home is pretty significant, right? So that is kind of another thing that I. Um, and it's a challenge that I'm kind of looking at. And I'm also seeing it, I'm, I'm kind of trans transitioning now after giving you the facts to my realizations and what I've realized. So number one, this is going to require a, a good amount of discipline because I feel like working from home just does require more discipline than working in an office. In an office, you're kind of, I mean, a different set of disciplines. Um, it's something that I feel like I'm particularly suited to because I do, I work very well on my own. I'm very self-directed. Um, I prefer peace and quiet and calm. Um, I'm not someone that necessarily thrives on um, the energy of a crowd or a group. So I very much appreciate um, being able to work on my own time in my own way. So that's a benefit for sure. Um, on the other side, there's no one kind of ensuring that you get things done. There's no one that you can like pop into their office and be like, hey, how do I do this? You know, hey, can you give me a hand? Um, hey, can we talk this through? Can I just run this by you quickly? So we have, um, we use Slack at work and um, that's something that, uh, that that's a quick way to get in touch with someone. You can always pick up the phone and call them as well. So that's that's still a channel that I can use, but it does require um, again just a little bit more discipline. So I found today was my first day um, working remote, and it 
it was really, I, it was good. So I set myself a goal that I would get up and take a walk and I'll kind of go into, let me know if you want to schedule like that I'm setting out for myself. Cause I'm, I'm really excited to see how this shakes out because, um, I love having kind of the freedom to design my own day. Um, so I, I got up, I took a walk, um, and I was really disciplined with what I got done. I had a few calls in the morning and then the afternoon was a little bit less structured. So that was, was helpful from a work standpoint. So the next um, thing, so that's kind of what I am, where I'm working from. And I realized that I am extremely fortunate to be able to work from home and still get a paycheck. That's huge. So that's something that I, I am very, very, um, that I so appreciate. On the other side, what that's sort of brought home to me is that my goals are shifting. And rather than focusing on paying off my my loan, my only debt is my student loan, which is about 12,000, uh, 12,500 um, left to pay. So that's still a goal, but that has moved down from goal number one to goal number two. And goal number one now is to increase my savings. So the amount, I'd like to have $10,000 saved up um, because a friend had mentioned this amount that she just, you know, kind of casually, she had that saved. And I was like, excuse me, like, that's a lot of money. Like, that's a really good amount to have. So that is something that's, that's become my top goal because, so I have this, this loan that's $12,000 and 12,500 and the interest rate on this loan is 2% because I got it in 2004 and interest rates were at a record low then 2% interest. So you tell me which one you would rather have. Tell me if you'd rather have $12,000 in the bank or 12,000 or, or no student loan. And it's, I, I feel like it'd be really hard to find someone who would rather have no debt and no savings. Like for me personally, I would rather have $12,000 in savings than no debt, than no student loan. My payment is $129 a month. I am, I'm cool with that. So I feel like at present, it's just my, I, and this is kind of how I felt for a while, but I feel like my life is just one continual storm. <laughs> Ever since I started this channel uh, in 2015, I feel like the storms have just been piling up and that it's just where I am. So that's how my strategy has changed. These are all things that I have mentioned before, but I think that this year, just hearing my friend mention that number, I'm like that she wants to have that by the end of the year. I'm like, yeah, like I like to have that too. Um, so that is huge for me. And I realize the importance of preparation and focus to get that done. So transitioning to the section of goals, that's my number one goal is to have $10,000 $10, saved by the end of the year. I took my tax refund and I put that to kind of give myself a start. Um, I just made a pretty big eBay um, sale, which if it goes through, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm waiting to kind of, you know, see how it shakes out. Um, but that will kind of bump me up to about a fifth of the way there. So I have, what is that, nine more months to... Mm, yeah, about eight and a half more months to achieve that. So eight and a half months to save $8,000. It's a pretty big goal um, when my expenses are super, super tight. Um, it's a huge goal and it's going to require a lot of hustle. So those my number one goal is to get 10000 saved. And my number two goal is to really build my work schedule. Excuse me, build my work skills. So that is why I'm kind of mentioning the work situation because this has always been on my kind of list of things to do. And I really appreciate this time as a way to, um, to kind of build those remote work from home skills. Um, so that's, those are the two goals I have save 10,000, build my work from home skills strategy. What am I going to do? How am I going to get that saved? And it's going back to something that I've mentioned before and I've not kind of done so well at because I've started with, and that's just the hustle. That's doing what I can to increase my income. Um, because you can cut so much, you can only cut so much from your lifestyle, but there's no limit to how much you can earn. And, uh, going to FinCon and hearing Ramit Sethi speak really brought that home to me. Um, but it takes strategy because, allocating for me allocating your time and your energy to the right income streams or to the building the right income streams is really important because you can spend like three hours and make 10 bucks or you can spend three hours and make three hundred three thousand dollars and for me it's really just doing the work to figure out what that is and just being more disciplined. Ha ha. That's another, I like, think that's like another word that's really coming in here is the idea of discipline. So that's how I'm going to do. I'm going to hustle. And number two, is this whole situation, um, the climate of the world, is really emphasizing to me the idea of cutting back and figuring out how low you can go. So 
In the past, when I thought about my expenses, I kind of came at it from the angle of how much can I cut? And it, it was painful. It's like, oh, I have to cut this or I can't have that. And my immediate response was to rebel. Um, but rather than doing that, I think what I'm going to try to do is go from a position of how much, how little can I live on and coming at it from the opposite, re opposite re direction rather than like how much do I have to cut down? How much do I get to give myself to live on? So... It's kind of a subtle shift, but to my mindset, it's significant because I've always been someone that comes from, or let's start from the work, worst case scenario and work back. So more to come on that and how, how that's going to be changing and my strategy. So the final element that I'd like to review is my story and how this is prompting me to examine the beliefs that I hold. And this is just more emphasis to me that in this, again, increasingly uncertain age that we live in. It's so important to control your controllables, control what you can control. And what is that? What's the biggest thing you can control is your mindset and the way you think about the time and what's around you and the resources that are allocated to you and what you can do to be the best steward of your resources, your time, your energy, your money, your attention. And for me, those four things are so important and I am choosing to be even more intentional about where I focus them. So that's my quick kind of update in a, in a nutshell, what's going on um, currently where I am. I would love to hear your feedback and how the current climate is affecting you, where you live, if you're seeing shortages, if that's kind of encouraged you or reinforced decisions that you've made or made you make different decisions. Um, I'd love to hear your journey and what's going on. So thanks again for watching and I hope you'll keep watching. Bye.